Hey everyone, this is David Brown with the Migration Update for April 23rd, 2024 from the Braddock Bay Hawkwatch. As expected, we had great weather today for a big flight and we ended up with nearly 6,000 raptors and a lot of people were able to make it out to the platform to witness the huge flight. So today was a lot of fun. Stay tuned to hear all about it. But first, let me remind you that this coming weekend is the Bird of Prey Days 2024 Festival held at Braddock Bay Park, where we hold the Hawk Watch, and that kicks off on Friday evening with a presentation at 7 p.m. into the woods, Raptors of the Forest, and then an 8 o'clock sunset walk in Owl Prow, and then there are events all day Saturday and Sunday as well. I'll put a link in the description. With favorable winds overnight and into the morning, Kim and I got an early start out at the Braddock Bay West Spit in time to enjoy a really nice sunrise and meet some friends out there for a nice morning flight. But in reality, it turned out to be not as good as we had hoped. There were a couple of highlights. For example, we had the season's first spotted sandpiper, and we also had three lesser yellow legs, which dropped in on the barrier island. But there weren't really that many warblers around, just a couple of palm warblers and yellow rumped warblers. So not the big morning flight we had been hoping for, but still a fun morning to be out. We got over to Braddock Bay Park around 8 a.m. so we could be there nice and early to start the hawk watch and there were already sharp shinned hawks moving. The weather was beautiful. You can see it was a sunny morning with a high layer of thin clouds moving in and we had a really good raptor flight throughout the morning and into the early afternoon. As we got into the mid-afternoon there were some periods of darker clouds that shut the flight down but then it brightened up a bit again and we had a steady flight to end the day the last few hours. The winds today were moderate to strong and started out from the south and eventually shifted around to the southwest, so it was a favorable wind all day and the raptor total showed that. In the morning we had this finch flyover, we see a little bit of yellow in the wing, we see some striping on the underside of the body, and a thin pointed bill, this is a pine siskin. Here we see a hawk that has a long tail and long wings with rounded tips, so we should be thinking excipiter. We see orange barring underneath, so we know it's an adult, either sharp shinned hawk or Cooper's hawk. We see that the tail is very squared off because all of the feathers are the same length and the bird has a small head, making this a sharp shinned hawk. And we had an excellent flight of sharpies today with more than 300 for the day, and they were coming through both low and high off to both sides. They were just all over the place, and we had some really nice looks at them throughout the day. One of the benefits of getting out to the hawk watch early on big days like this is that the first broad-winged hawks that are moving through are often really low and give excellent looks. Here we have an adult broad wing. We can see it's a small beautio with somewhat pointed wings. We see brown barring on the underside of the body. We see a dark trailing edge to the wing and that trailing edge is very straight. And for the tail we see that it's dark with a wide white band. Compare that to this adult red-tailed hawk, which is a similar shape overall, but bigger. And we see dark patagial bars here on the front of the wing and a dark belly band. And we see a dark trailing edge to the wings and a red tail. Here we have a large dark raptor. We see a dark head, dark underside of the body, but it does have extensive white underneath, especially in the wing pit area. This is a juvenile bald eagle. Here we have a small raptor with very pointed wings, so we should be thinking a small falcon. We see that the bird is overall light underneath with some brown streaking. This is a female American kestrel, and it looks like it has something in its beak. Here we have a large dark raptor, and we see some gold color to the nape, which is the back of the neck. This is a golden eagle, which is a species you'll become very familiar with over the course of this video. Here we have another adult broad-winged hawk. This one's tucked into a bit more of a glide, and pretty much all of the broad-winged hawks we are seeing right now are adults. The adults migrate first, and then as we get more into May, we start to get all of the juvenile broad-winged hawks following them. As the morning went on, we started to see more and more broad-winged hawks and bigger and bigger kettles. Here we have a large dark raptor, and we see three points of white, one in the center of each wing and the base of the tail. We also see that this bird has a relatively small head compared to the tail. This is another immature golden eagle. And just a minute or two after that previous one, we had this bird. Again, we see three points of white, one in each wing and the base of the tail. We see a small head compared to a longer tail. This is classic golden eagle. Here we have a hawk where we see dark patagial bars in the shoulder area and a belly band. So this is a red-tailed hawk. 
and looking at the overall appearance of the bird is quite pale. We do not see a dark trailing edge to the wings or a red tail. This is a juvenile red-tailed hawk. Here we have part of another big kettle of broad-winged hawks, and as a fun exercise, you might want to guess how many you think are in this photo, and then count and get a rough count of how many there actually are, and see if you are in the right ballpark or not. I bet there's more in this photo than you guess. Here's another big kettle of broad-winged hawks, and it's just so much fun to be out and see thousands and thousands of these hawks as they migrate north. Here is a hawk that is a beautio, but it's a bit lanky looking and has really long, thin, pointed wings. We see that the overall coloration of the bird is a lot of lights and darks. So overall, the bird is light, but we do see a lot of black here at the wingtips. We see black squares in the carpal area, and we see a really dark blob covering the entire belly. So this is a rough-legged hawk in the light morph. They also come in dark morphs as well. And we know that this one's a juvenile because it does not have that bold, dark trailing edge to the wings, and it's kind of got a diffuse, dark tip to the tail. Here's yet another large, dark raptor. We see a little bit of white in the wings. Hard to make out in this photo, but we do see the white on the base of the tail. We see a small head with a golden nape. And we see a somewhat long tail. This is another golden eagle. And here we have another golden eagle where the photo quality is not as good because it was farther away, but you can see that this one had larger white patches in the wings. Here's a songbird flying by, and perhaps the most distinctive thing is some yellow here under the wing, and also we can see a little yellow here on the rump, making this a yellow-rumped warbler. Here we have a large, lanky, black-and-white raptor with drooping wings carrying a fish back towards its nest. This is an osprey. Here we have a small raptor with pointed wings, making it a small falcon. We see its light underneath with a distinctive facial pattern. This is another female American kestrel. And once again, we have a large dark raptor, maybe a little bit of white under the wings. Doesn't really show that well in this photo. Uh, we don't really see any white throughout the underside otherwise. We see a small head with some gold here on the back of the neck. This is the sixth and final golden eagle of the day. Here we have a blue and white water bird with a very thick bill. This is a belted kingfisher, and we know it's a male because it just has the blue band and does not have any brown underneath. Here we have another large dark raptor, but on this one we see a larger head, and we see a lot of white throughout the underside, especially here in the wing pit area. And we see an even trailing edge to the wing. This is a juvenile bald eagle. And around this time of the season, we start to see birds that look like this, that have really dark heads and dark underside to the body. These are bald eagles that are extremely fresh, and we refer to them as southern juvenile bald eagles because these are bald eagles that were born over the winter to the south of us. So they look very different from the juvenile bald eagles that were born last summer to the north of us, where by this point they're starting to molt. They've had their feathers for almost a year, so they're really worn out looking. When we see these southern juveniles, they just look so fresh and so dark underneath. Taking a look at the eBird report from the Hawk Watch, today we had 72 species. I had one new species for the season today, which was spotted sandpiper. Taking a look at the Hawk Count report for our migrant raptor totals, today we had 686 turkey vultures, 2 ospreys, 83 bald eagles, 27 northern harriers. For exhibitors, we had 322 sharpies and three coops. For beautios, we had 4,707 broadwings, 37 red tails, and two rough legs. We had six golden eagles, and we had the falcon trifecta with 34 kestrels, two merlins, and one peregrine for a total of 5,912 migrating raptors. That brings the April total to 38,653, and the season total to 46,773. We had a lot of visitors today, I'd estimate at least 50, a lot of people up on the platform and a lot of people down in the grass, so it was great to see so many people and enjoy a big hawk flight together. Taking a look at the forecast for tomorrow, they're calling for morning showers and then partly cloudy with a high around 49 and winds north-northwest at 10 to 20 miles per hour. So there's a cold front that will hit around 9 a.m. tomorrow. So we may actually try to get out for some morning birding, but for the actual hawk watching period, it's going to be an unfavorable northerly wind fairly strong. So would not expect much migration. 
For Thursday, it's looking mainly sunny with the high in the mid 40s and light northeasterly winds. We'll probably end up moving to Frisbee Hill and trying to spot the birds from there. It'll be hit or miss. I'd expect light to moderate migration. And for Friday, it's looking sunny with the high in the mid 50s, winds east at 10 to 20 miles per hour. I'd expect light to moderate migration. Well, it was another terrific day of hawk watching here at Braddock Bay. I was so glad that a lot of people got to come out and see some big kettles of broadwings and also some nice looks at golden eagles. So a lot of fun up on the platform. Really nice to see a lot of people from the area and from out of the area as well. I hope you're able to visit us soon out at the Braddock Bay Hawk Watch. From Lyco Birds, this is David Brown. Thanks for watching.